Ja już zaczęłam. Hello everybody. Jak już to u mnie w komputerze wyłącz ten internety. Będę potrafił. Hello, hello. We are starting just in a moment. Hey there! Hi, how are you? Oh, this is a little bit tilted. Hello everybody, welcome to my studio, it's Finn over here and today we are going to work on um, quite simple but very fun project which is based on the wooden box. So I hope you are going to have uh, some fun and it's a great chance to see how to uh, use, for example, I think brilliance waxes on white surface and to see how to work with the stencils and uh, how you can use the molds of different kinds. So if you feel that you are a mixed media or home decor beginner, this is a really great chance to uh, see some of the products used. One of them is going to be uh, White Crackle, which is a very, very lovely matte finish medium, which is crackling just like the old paint peeling on the walls. And I can see a lot of people joining and that is great. Great to see you and uh, hello to my patrons. <laughs> I can see a lot of you here. Hello to my um, friends uh, from different parts of the world. I can see um, <laughs> I can see really international group here. Hello to Ingrid. Hello, Caroline. Hello, Patricia. Uh, hello, Carmen. Hello, Katia. <laughs> So uh, we are here today to um, have a look at the possibilities of using um, not very wide range of mediums to create like antiqued look uh, on the wooden box. And uh, there are not too many things that you need to prepare if you want to make this kind of project. Uh, you need to have some kind of white primer, gesso is the best solution. I'm going to use my gesso. It's good to have white or pearl paste, which is going to be the white texture, and white crackle, and then some kind of antiquing wax. And for me, it's going to be antique brilliance wax. It is uh, quite possible I will add some extra colors there in um, as well. And I'm planning to add a tiny touch of color from liquid acrylics. So we are going to see what happens. I will tell you about different options as well. Hello, Lisa, and hello to um, oh, Ireland. Okay, good to see somebody from Ireland. Uh, we don't really have too many people from Ireland. However, I'm in East Galway. So um, I can see Poland. Cześć, cześć, Aga. And um, I will be here with you just explaining everything step by step as always. If you want to help, you can share this live stream in Finnevar and Friends Open Studio group. 
that will be great hello to chicago <laughs> and um if you can please uh, share it on create with prima as well and of course you can share it on your private walls if you want to this is open for everybody it's a free uh, video and uh, i'm absolutely happy to see you all here hello to sydney oh my god you are up very early today lisa <laughs> hello emilia so first of all, um, just to explain, we are using my mixed media range of products, uh, which I made for Prima Marketing. And of course, oh, I didn't open the box. Yeah, I will have to work on that later. <laughs> there is a wooden box that I already started painting with gesso. And um, because I painted and I forgot to open, I will have to do it a little bit later you can see i started already on the top there's just one coat so this is not perfect but on the sides and on the uh, bottom it's two layers of gesso hello to california <laughs> and um uh, the range of products i'm showing you today they are officially mixed media products but they are of course very well uh, working for any kind of mix uh, sorry any kind of uh, home decor surfaces so if you are doing a uh, smaller home decor accessories or furniture you can include these techniques into your range you can use these products with uh, great results they are great quality and they're going to work on every kind of surface that you work on in home decor as well so if you can picture uh, what I'm doing today in the larger scale, it is going to help uh, a lot. And just to make it easier, I will show you another box so you will see what kind of product I'm using. It's really simple. I have a smaller version here. Just, I would say pine. Simple box with them some hinges there's no closing uh, but this is what i'm going to do uh, of course i will paint the insides later as well but today we are going to focus on the outside and <laughs> some people don't know but before i was doing um scrapbooking and mixed media my first kind of project that i was into the it was the box decorating so i have some experience hi hi and for those of you who are expecting to see my puppy here he is so this is little kai he is a shelty so shetland sheepdog puppy nine weeks old and he may cause some trouble and some noises in the background Please forgive us for that. He's super cute, I promise. But he's having his zoomies time at this point. So he's running mindlessly around the table. Okay? So <laughs> that, if you hear something strange, that may be this reason. <laughs> Kai is uh, full of energy at the moment. So, yeah. Now a bit shy, but just don't believe it. <laughs> Okay, so, um, the, sorry, box decorating, it's kind of fun thing and you can, yeah, handsome puppy, right? I think so. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. Um, it is a project that you can easily translate onto bigger panel or piece of furniture. If you have some, um, surface which is going to be nicely visible you can add these um, techniques on the top and it's going to add interesting texture and it's going to look really nice with these uh, details underlined and uh, contrasted with uh, some a bit of you know antiquing techniques add a little bit of color so we are going to start very soon as soon as i'm going to move my dog off the tape boxes And that was it. <laughs> Soon my husband will be here. So he's going to take care of this little devil. Okay. So we are going to look from this angle. 
much easier. So first step when you work on the surface, which is either slippery or absorbing, and here we've got wood, which is absorbing, uh, it is to prime it. And the best way to prime is to use proper product, which is gesso or any other primer that you have on hand. Gesso is general name for the primers that are um, present in fine art. And I'm going to use the white heavy gesso from Art Basics. And I primed all the sides, but the top two times. So now I'm just going to the top with you. Uh, so you don't feel that I was cheating. And I'm going to put one coat of this gesso. Uh, the previous coat is already dry. So usually with the surfaces that are a little bit absorbing or maybe quite dark, it's uh, important that you can uh, put two coats. And also uh, if you feel that your surface is really rough and maybe not smooth as you like, um, it is a good idea to sand it in between the layers. So you can use fine sanding paper and do a little bit of sanding. Of course, sanding is only possible to do when your gesso is completely dry. So make sure you're going to dry in between. We're going to work with the textures. So you don't really have to sand it. It's going to be uh, with texture anyway. So you can see that goes quickly. And I will keep it on the side because we are going to use it again very soon. And before we're going to decorate, and just check where is the front. It's like that. I'm going to uh, dry it with the heat gun. You can use your hair dryer or let it dry naturally. Hello, Marianne, hello. Good to see you. Just so dress quickly and it's easy to work on it uh, right away. So I'm going to let it dry for a moment and I'm just bringing the mold that I was using. This is the mold that I want to use today. Um, it is called aviary and it is a combination of uh, stems of probably cherry flowers or maybe apple blossom and then there are some cute birds that are going to go with that and of course i worked in advance so i have some of these prepared so you don't have to wait for the resin to cure at all So I'm touching now and I can see this is fine. I'm able to start working on it. And I wanted to get antiqued effect. So that means I will have a bit of the crackle and a bit of the special texture. And um, I decided to combine the look of the text. This is stencil I made for Prima from a line called Gothic. There's another one which is similar colored manuscript, which is previous release and also nice uh, red lettering that is going to add a little bit of mystery to your project. Uh, so that is going to be quite fun. You can do the stenciling on the side of the project, of course, as well. And uh, on the bottom, if you have the patience, but remember the more you do, uh, the more you do, the more you have to wait for everything to dry. So be careful. And uh, the next thing we are going to apply more or less at the same time is the crackle texture paste. This is white version. So it looks very much like gesso when you open it. But in fact, it's going to crack. When you're doing this kind of uh, project, when you have a lot of elements, it's good to plan a little bit so you know where to put your... Uh, stenciling where to put your crackle so it's going to be at least partly visible 
sometimes the planning is not too good so uh, if you are not sure what you are doing yeah you may discover your stencil is not visible in the end so these are the elements taken out from the mold so i can now show you what was my idea how to put it all together i really liked the concept of uh, making this uh, branch with the uh, apple blossoms on one side maybe a little bit longer here adding like some extra leaves that would be really cute or maybe this one here yeah and then i have this extra one and i have two birds i want to include okay they are all coming from one mold so i just made them in advance with the uh, qu quick curing resin so they just pop quite easily these are um yeah polycraft like poly quick drying polyuterine poly resin and it may be any resin you like it may be also any kind of air drying clay it is not really that important for this project what kind of material you're going to use because it's going to be flat gluing anyway they don't have to be flexible and this one is uh, drying in about 20 minutes so this is quick and um, I have this bird and I have this bird for the top so they're going to be included in that design just ignore the poppy playing with the ball please <laughs> and I was thinking one bird is going to sit on the top and the other one is going to fly to say hello and that means I will have quite a lot of space in this corner to put my text and it is going to help to just remember that I can't really put too much on that side. However, I can add antiquing effect. So this there will be kind of crackling happening in this corner, which is going to be quite cool. So I don't plan to crack everything. I want to do it in some parts. So it really looks like the um, project is a little bit like falling apart. It's really old. So this is the plan, but this is not the end. I have some other ideas on my mind. <sighs> yeah, uh, if you hear this uh, crazy noise, this is my puppy running without any reason around the room. So, haha, <laughs> this is the fun part. So, stenciling and crackle paste. When you apply the crackle paste, you have to remember this product doesn't really like to be rushed. It likes to sit a little bit in some parts of your project. It is just simply better to let it dry naturally. And you have to apply it almost like icing on the cake, which means it is... It looks wasteful, but in fact, this is how it works. You have to give it this thick coat so the crackles will happen. I'm starting with the crackle paste and I do it in a random kind of uh, careless way, mostly in the corner where my branch is going to be. I can always add more in the selected parts later. On the other hand, now I can also work with adding some stenciling. So, you know, there's no problem. I can even put it directly on the crackle and then add some modeling paste. So they're not going to fight with each other that much. So I'm just going to apply two mediums at the same time. Just I use two different uh, tools. So it is not going to be dirty. Ta -da -dum, ta -da -dum. And this is modeling paste, which is uh, the medium, uh, which is white and flexible after drying. So for the project, which is based on the idea that everything is going to be white, it's really like a shortcut. You don't have to paint it to have white color right away. Okay, let's see what we've got. Yeah, and that looks quite cool. And even I got some texture already. Nice. I really like it. Then on the other side, we're going to have some crackle here. So I can smooth that crackle with my texture brush. Well, 
silicone brush a little bit. And now the question is, do you want to add something on the sides as well or not really? Because if you don't want to add anything on the sides, you can just start drying. But I was thinking it would be nice to have like one bird here and maybe a little bit of text as well. So I'm going to clean the other side of the stencil and add some stenciling on the sides and on maybe front yep so cleaning is important because you don't want this dirty part of the stencil to create extra texture on your project so i will just go and give it a quick wipe in my sink and in the meantime i will start drying the box and i'm not blowing at the crackle i'm blowing at the modeling paste so this is going to be beginning of the drying process that is kind of like cool as it is now so you know i like it So in the meantime, I was able to wash my stencil and I will, because the box is kind of easy to put flat, I can now add a tiny bit of that texture in the other desired places. And we are not going for perfection. We just want to create a bit of the nice effect very cool maybe here and here really cool results now again the stencil goes into the water so both of these products are kind of permanent so <clears throat> it's important that you will dry it before it's uh, sorry clean it before it's going to be dry and now because the crackle doesn't like to be rushed we have to dry it carefully from the distance a little bit because very soon we are going to start uh, gluing the elements too so now i'm going to use the heat gun but i'm blowing from far far away and we'll see what happens this part is almost dry because this is where my heat gun was pointing but crackle really likes to take the time Even white on white looks nice. In the ideal situation, we would leave the crackle to dry in the dry and warm place and the crackles would show up and then everything would be perfect. But we are not in the ideal situation, so I have to speed it up with the heat gun. Remember that you can always um, do that work in stages. If you have the chance, you can just let it dry and then come back to it. Of course, it's not crackling yet, but we can have a look at the sides and start gluing the elements 
before this is uh, dry. So I'm going to go back to my modeling paste. This was this white medium we used for the stencil, this one. And now we're going to use it as a glue because this medium is very, very sticky. It's great adhesive, just like 3D gel or uh, heavy body gel, and it dries white. I'm going to take a portion of it out so it's easier for me to work. I can put it on the lid. And we can start sticking our mold elements on the top. So the plan was this bird is going to come from that side. So I'm going to apply a bit of modeling paste and stick it. And you can see the excess, but it's okay. We're going to push it in the empty parts. Quite nice. Then there was a secret plan with the branch. Like one goes this way and the other one goes more towards the bottom of the composition. So again, I'm adding this modeling paste. <laughs> oh, Liliana, I made so many boxes in my life. I think, uh, I don't even remember, but this was the beginning of my story with crafts, the boxes. Okay. All these imperfections are absolutely fine because it's going to be antique effect. Yeah, so again, I'm adding a bit of this modeling paste, especially in that part where it is completely dry now. Crackle is wet, so it's going to hold it, but the other side is dry, so we have to add extra. Hello, Pascal. Let's say like this. Then we had this extra branch here, so it looks more natural. And extension, <laughs> extension. Not bad at all. And then this bird was supposed to sit, yeah, sit here. Oh, come on. Make the space for the tail. Okay, like this. Very cute. Now, we've got a bit of that crackle all over and it's still, still uh, very wet. But if you look at the top, you can see the crackling started already, okay? So either, ah, I forgot. I wanted to add one more bird. There's one more bird in that set. This one looks a bit grumpy. I have no idea why. Maybe he's got a bad day. So let's take the grumpy bird and pretend it's sitting here on the branch. Hmm. This branch is not too easy to... You want to sit on the branch? No? Now, you will. You know, crackle paste is not a good glue, but it was such a thick uh, layer that because I pushed it in and because I'm using modeling paste around it, it's going to hold it. <laughs> yeah, maybe the bird missed the worm. This is true. He was not an early bird. <laughs> No, basically crackle paste is just holding that uh, embellishment because it's so thick. 
Sorry, this is another animal of mine playing. Now it's the cat playing with the golf ball. We can't just, today we just can't, we, ha we will have some background noises. Okay, I think it does look quite nice. It looks like the bird is reading the text. <laughs> Let's dry it a little bit. On this side. I wish you could see what is happening here in the background. My husband took the the dog away, but now the cat is playing. I'm drying a little bit. I want the crackle to start crackling. And I can cool it down from time to time. Have you got any questions so far? So now we have first step. I'm just going to uh, give you like a um, run through. First step, two coats of uh, white heavy gesso on the top of the wooden box because we needed the primer. Then second step, it was drying completely. Third step, we were adding modeling paste, which is uh, art medium flexible and white after drying also very very sticky and we use the stencil to create that design you can see here and then we were also at the same time adding white crackle to add a little bit of the antiquing effect to our box as well especially in that corner a little bit in that corner as well here but it's just to make it a little bit more fun and not so you know clean everywhere because i prefer to have more grungy projects now i want to show you something the crackling is happening you can hopefully see the crackle paste started to make those little cracks and that means it is happening and you should give it a little bit of the breathing time as well okay don't overdo it because otherwise it is going to be um you know, just crackling too fast in not very expected way. Now, this is very, very cute. And <laughs> I wouldn't be myself if I didn't add something grungy to it. So I'm going to add some cogs. This is going to be more mechanical than just completely flowery. Uh, it's my book, so I prefer to have some extras. But what I want to show you is that you can layer molds on one on top of another as well. So romantic is good, but I'm not a very uh, romantic person. I'm much more grungy. So I was thinking I'm going to include a bit of the cogs uh, from my molds as well. For example, you can use this mold called Mechanica and they are different sizes of gears for example this gear comes from here okay and if you prefer <laughs> a romantic traditional style you can just stop here don't follow any extra layers you've got beautiful flowers and you've got your birds everybody is in the positive mood now I'm going to grunge it up for myself to feel a little bit better with this creation. But you can see with this modeling paste, you are able to stick even on uneven surfaces. You just have to use it almost like mounting glue. So 
so this is turning into more <laughs> more grungy i just can't i just can't help it sorry that would be so disappointing for myself it that was just like typical um romantic box if you don't like grungy you just skip this point <laughs> you can do just this sweet and uh, romantic way you can even add this one on the top it looks like a big screw of course it will be important to dry completely before applying any kind of mediums because we don't want anything to move of course That's, so it's important that you will um you will dry everything i found one more flower from that mold and now this bird is looking like huh what's going on here what is that stuff here like why <laughs> Okay, I think this would that would be enough. If you want to add some extras, I could also suggest using, for example, art pebbles. So some kind of the neutral round details like this. They would work really well and they're going to add some interest into the project as well. So it is not going to be just one mold and stencil. Sorry, I put my elbow in the in the art mediums. So for example, just a few of these bubbles here and there for extra texture. You know, it's nice when your personality is shining through your project. So if you have some things that you like to use, you should not really stop yourself. Right? Yes, this writing is one of the stencils I made for Prima. This is called Gothic and I used modeling paste uh and um that's that stencil to create that design the stencil is in the sink but hopefully i can show you the other one um, oh i have one more it's from finovar collection for Prima marketing, it's called Gothic, and I was using uh, Art Basics modeling paste from Prima and Finavar, and now I'm just using the same modeling paste to glue the details to my box. I added the uh, molds already using this modeling paste, and now I'm adding the uh, little bubbles. You can use these mediums such as modeling paste or uh, 3D gel for gluing all of your molds to your projects without any problems. You don't have to use any special glue. They work really well. They are water-based, so they are not so bad for you and environment as well. This is just very, very sticky version of the uh, modeling paste that would be created for artist purposes. And we have them in different sizes. We've got them in tubes, we've got them in uh, 250 milliliter jars, and we have them in 500 milliliter jars as well. Hmm, I think one is missing here. The crackle, yes, the crackle is white crackle from Prima Marketing. It's called white crackle paste from Prefinavar Art Extravagance Collection. Texture paste, white crackle. 
in general, I try to show the possibilities of my products I made for Prima. So I'm uh, trying to uh, give you the ideas. How can you use them for different projects, not just uh, typically artistic uh, collage or um, dimensional mixed media, but in general, they were created to uh, make working on dimensional projects easier. So this is how it works. You would throw some, ha some hearts. Yeah, if you have any hearts on hand, absolutely. It is just, you know, your own personal style. Let's give this bird some happy company as well. Now, before we are going to paint it again with gesso, especially we need to paint the molds because they are slippery resin. It's almost like plastic. Um, we will need to make sure everything is dry and not moving. Paste is dry already. This modeling paste dries quite quickly. So it's a great advantage when you're gluing things. But um, when it comes to the crackle, it needs a little bit extra of love. So please don't worry. Just give it another moment of drying. The best you, what you can do is to leave it in the warm place and go and have something to drink or lunch and come back. No worries, Aileen, it's not that late. Okay. And now I'm trying to dry different parts of the project so it is going to dry evenly, especially I have to be careful about the crackle. Just in the meantime, crackling continues. You can see the crackling showing more and more. I'm going to mostly paint just the embellishments. And when you have dimensional project like I do, it's good to dry from the angle. So you can get, you know, there with your drying process as well. So just for those of you who came late, no worries. We have you covered. First step, it was the gesso. Gesso is very important when it comes to priming the boxes. Two coats of white gesso. Second step, stenciling done with the Gothic stencil, Finavar collection, and modeling paste. And then some freehand textures with crackle paste to add extra results. And now we have to dry it to make sure everything is going to stay in place properly. I'm happy you like it, Mary. This is really nice combination of elements and I'm just grunging that up, but adding, you know, mechanical parts and making that a little bit more dimensional. But I'm sure you can imagine that without any cogs and gears included. Okay, then we'll think about the mold for the pebbles or the bigger pots than Debbie. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it all depends. Like in these smaller pots, we have more of the small ones and less of the big ones. So there's chance that you will get into the right balance. Okay, I will check now if it's okay for painting. The crackling continues. You can see more and more crackle. Right. And I have to check now how the elements are sitting. Like I can see the pebbles are kind of okay. The bird is fine. 
these two need a little bit more of drying but in the meantime when it's cooling down I can take my brush and start painting the elements which are ready for example I can paint the grumpy bird on the bottom and just to make your work easier you can also give like one coat of the gesso on the top of the stenciling as well gesso is the primer that makes everything matte so first of all whatever is not so easy to um, paint or wax or um, change into something else is going to accept the mediums much better now I don't want to paint over crackle because it may take away a bit of that detail and I was not very heavy-handed so the crackles are going to be quite fine I will just try to paint mostly the um, embellishments Yes, I can provide a list of supplies later in the comments no problem There are not many though <laughs> One, two, three art mediums so far Mold Pebbles and then there will be waxes paints. Yeah It's not going to be very list I'm drawing again from the angle to make sure it is going to get completely dry before painting. Yeah, this is the only paint with the crackle. You have to give it time to get the cracks working. And the more it dries naturally, the better the cracks are. So during the show when we have to speed up the process this crackling is not as impressive as it can be when you do it at home yes these are from aviary mold from prima everything on this box is from this mold except the mechanical parts which are from my mold these are the two molds I used so far. So Prima redesign with Prima aviary with the birds and uh, let's say these are apple blossoms. And that is, yes, exactly. Uh, Finavar is my line for Prima product, uh, for Prima. So this is part of Prima marketing. It's uh, mostly art mediums, paints, waxes, different products you can use for home decor, mixed media, and other supplies. So we've got these two used. Yeah? Yes, I gave you the name. It's called Aviary. I have no idea about the code. I'm sorry because the code was on the packaging and I threw away the packaging long ago. Aviary. And this one is called Mechanica. Mechanica, it's a Finavar collection. Oh, no worries, Alessandra. We are here waiting for you patiently. Aviary from Redesign. Ah, paste name? Ugh, okay, because we have three pastes. Okay. So, we first of all... We started with white heavy gesso art basics. Then we were using modeling paste from art basics to make the stenciling. Yep. And together with that, to get the crackle, we used uh, white crackle texture paste from uh, Art Extravagance collection uh, for Prima as well. Three, three different ones. But first one is primer. The other ones are... Uh, art medium so the you know primer is a little bit different purpose now I will try to paint these ones so I'm just going to go on the top yes white uh, white crackle paste 
Chrome Art Extravagance Collection by Finavar for Prima. And then Modeling Paste from Art Basics Collection by Finavar from Prima. Basically, everything you see today is Prima. That will be, pra that will be important information. Prima Redesign Group, so we do as much Prima as possible because they really have amazing products. Okay, so I'm brushing thin coat of the gesso. Gesso. Thank you, Danny. You are the best. On the top of these uh, resin elements, so it will be easier to wax them later or to paint them later. It's better to do it in two thinner coats and keep more of the details if you really like them than to go thick and lose all of the details right away, especially if you use heavier products. I like texture, so I really made my gesso heavy. You can always water it down if it's too thick, but I suggest to go with two thinner coats instead of one thick. Yeah, this one is still not completely dry. It would be much better if I could wait longer. But life is life. Hopefully it's going to stay. If not, I will stick it again in a moment. I'll put more. Nobody will know. Just don't tell anyone. Perfect. And then I will just give it a quick second brush once everything is dry. And I can read the questions. Thank you, Danny. That was very, very kind of you. I'm sorry, but I threw away the packaging of the molds long ago and I don't really know them by heart. Yeah, well, you know, molds are very useful tools because if you do a lot of projects, you can recreate your favorite elements over and over. And they come in different sizes, different styles. So there's always something that is going work for you. Okay, that is sitting much better now. If they are stubborn, you have to be more stubborn than they are. Just let, you know, tell them to stay. Okay, we can go with the second coat of gesso, just to make sure everything is nicely covered. Second time goes much faster and easier because it's already matte, so it will dry also very quickly. Look at this bird, it's so cute. And now this one coming to say hello. Thin coat of gesso to make sure we cover everything nicely. And then finally, these guys here. So after everything is going to be dry, we will use a little bit of paint and waxes to give the antiquing effect to it. And I already want to focus on the shades of 
red and brown so this is going to be a warmer color palette and uh, we will use at least one kind of wax and one kind of paint not too complicated but very very rewarding results stay there Okay, I will finish painting and I will look at the screen. So if you have any questions, this would be the right moment to ask. And I will dry it. Pretty. I can close the gesso and Danny, you are really great. What does the gesso do? Uh, Janelle, gesso is a primer. So it is art medium, which is uh, created to uh, make like isolation between uh, the paint or the top coat and the um, base you are working on. So first of all, it is isolation. So your base is not absorbing the paints, inks, uh, art mediums, waxes, and wood is usually absorbing a lot. So that is one of the things. Second, it is a uh, matte finish, which means your slippery surfaces are going to be easier to paint on. So your glass or your metal is turning completely matte. We are painting our um, project here because these elements, they are made of resin and this is basically plastic. You can see how shiny it is. So that means uh, your <laughs> product will be hard to paint on. Gesso is primer, which also has the color in it. Um, in the range, I've got white gesso, which is heavy, like this one, black heavy gesso and clear gesso, which is thinner and basically invisible matte coat that is possible to put on anything and to see the natural color of the product you are working on. So if you want to keep the color of your um, box, for example, you can use clear gesso instead. I hope that helps. Okay, the crackle is almost done. It's really pretty here on the bottom. So that looks really nice and antique. Okay. So oh, you can see this is uh, modeling paste and it is mixed with gesso. So it's on my fingers everywhere now. And we just finished the uh, gesso on the top of embellishments. No, I didn't brush on the crackle. I crackle this crackle has matte finish and I didn't want to cover it too much. Maybe I touched it by accident in some places, but it was just by accident. I didn't really paint over the crackles. I was painting these little pebbles and uh, elements. I painted over the modeling paste a little bit because it is slightly shiny. So you can see dimensional composition on the top. I will just clean my fingers. I sorry I have cut on my finger and that hurts. Sorry. So now I would like to add a little bit of color so this is not going to be just uh, brown <laughs> and white. I'm going to add a tiny bit of the pink rusty tone to it and we're going to use water sprayer and liquid acrylic paints which are very very concentrated uh, acrylic paints with uh, transparent and glossy finish. I take a little bit on the palette. I'm going to use carmine which is 
rusty red, like brick red. And I'm going to take crimson, which is ugh, crimson, which is very dark pink. And I'm going to use them together. So the color in between will be more like traditional red in some parts and in some parts more pink, in some parts more red. And I usually just use a small brush and water to make it flow. So it looks a bit like watercolors. Um, so let's see what happens. Yep. That was carmine. And now I'm adding a little bit of the crimson. And then we play. Kind of like playing with watercolors. If it's too much, you can always pick it up with the baby wipe, but they are permanent after drying. It's up to you what kind of color palette you are going to go for. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> Too much. I take a new baby wipe so I can pick up in a more controllable way. You can see a tiny bit of paint goes a very, very long way. So I'm trying to clean some parts, but some parts I want to keep the color. I think we're missing a bit of color here. Here we have some extra surprises. I was not careful, but it's okay. We will paint it with gesso later. So it's like playing with watercolors. If something goes wrong, you can always repeat. And this paint is going to be completely permanent as well, which is advantage when you want to get some uh, watercolor results on your project. Let's dry it. So it will stay permanent and I can move the box without fear. Oh, perfect, Marianne. I'm very, very happy that you are inspired.
Stage one of painting is done. I just have to repeat the same thing on the front. So it is going to work nicely. Just make sure all the paint is going to be completely dry because we don't want some drips happening unexpectedly like here, haha. <laughs> In general, heat gun is your best friend. Any questions so far? So, we've got a stencil done with modeling paste and gluing done with modeling paste. And then we have crackle paste as well for extra antiquing effect. And now we added a little bit of the liquid acrylic paints to get like watercolor effect on the top of that. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Let's see any more drips. Ah, here you are. No? Nobody? Really? Yeah, crackle is really visible. Once you have something that goes in the cracks, it starts to look amazing. Of course, we should give the same treatment to the grumpy bird as well. Otherwise, he's going to stay grumpy forever. But that would be not fair. He's a good bird. He just had a bad day. A tiny bit more of crimson, I think. What material are these molds? The elements were done with um, fast drying poly resin. I can't tell you the brand because it's something I buy on Amazon in UK. So Polycraft, I think. It's just something you can buy in big containers. Any good quality resin is going to do a good job. You have to check locally what is available in your place. Because I will give you suggestions and then you will be disappointed. But it's better to ask locally really and get the resin which is available to you you know stamping is always different than a real crackle would you uh, purchase in the redesign with prima site i think so they should have all of my art mediums on there listed uh, white crackle may be out of stock at this point, but it's coming back soon because it's one of the best-selling products. Hello to Mexico! Okay, Grumpy Bird is getting his watercolor background as well. 
And now we are going to do last two steps. Of course you can do it on each side of the box, it will be just boring to repeat the same thing over and over during the live stream. The technique is the same. Oh, we have more drips. <laughs> it wasn't completely dry. <laughs> so you can see it is permanent. No problem, I am planning to add something on the top anyway. I quite like it though. So now, uh, if you don't want the drips, you have to make sure it's dried completely. Don't, don't be me, but I don't mind. I am all about, you know, all about grungy effects and watercolor. And that looks very much like watercolor. And on the top of that all, now we can clean the top a little bit to make sure all these flowers are visible again. For flexible molds, yes, there is something which is called Prima molding material, which is flexible when it is um, drying. So you can stick it when it is still half wet. Prima molding material. Look, I'm now touching the tops of the composition to show a little bit of the uh, dimension using the same heavy gesso. Just dry brushing on the top. You can clean up the colors this way a little bit if you like. Some people love more Painty, some people would like to see more of the texture. You can dry and repeat. I would suggest to take more time when you are doing it so let it dry naturally make sure everything is drying completely before you paint but you know the re reality is we don't really have that much time during live stream so I have to speed up and that's why I will use the, my heat gun so much The trick when you're doing dry brushing is like you're touching the tops only. You don't go deep. It's just like you are powdering your nose <laughs> with the gesso. So this way, only the top parts of your embellishments. Oh, sorry. It didn't tell me that the table was moving. <laughs> It's always possible to repeat that step, but every time just a tiny bit of gesso on your brush. Get off the excess and then dry brush on the top. Yeah. And we're going to the last step. A little bit of the antique wax. And this is the... Um, stream like live when I want to show you <laughs> why we really have uh, antique waxes with the shimmer like some people don't get that concept when they buy them because they expect they're going to be uh, completely metallic they are only metallic on the dark surfaces and they are antique on the lighter ones so this is kind of like two in one so I'm going to use red amber uh, antique brilliance wax and that is going to add extra brown tones in the deeper parts. This one looks copper. Look at this color. 
but it really has brown wax inside as a base so it's going to be perfect for adding the touches it's also going to add a little bit of shimmer okay so grumpy bird on that side a bit of text we can paint on that side of course you can use the gesso to get rid of these imperfections as well i didn't think about it but i can show you now if you have something you don't like you can just paint over and clean it up the same way as we did with embellishments it's going to be less and less visible it's really up to you it's much better one more coat and it's going to be gone oh i'm so sorry I wish it was available everywhere, but you know, the craft shops and the home decor shops, they always have to make their choices. So they are trying to pick the ones they know, they, you know, they kind of are sure about them. And that's why sometimes it is hard to find really great products just because they are not known to that shop owner that much. So now I have a baby wipe and I've got not too big uh, brush I can use for adding antiquing effect. So I will be dabbing that in the cavities and then cleaning off the excess. For example here and then cleaning off the excess so it's going to underline the details and cleaning Don't wait too long with the cleaning because wax also gets permanent. So you don't always want to cover everything. You would like to have this possibility to wipe off. So you can see it is kind of transparent with the brown undertone and the micas ah my blending palette yes yeah, sorry uh it's me i just keep doing it it's so easy to <laughs> do it this way for me so um, this is what happens most of the times stay there this is the one which is still wet i have to make sure i will wait for this to yep and a little bit here Look at the crackle. This is really, really nice effect. I'm trying to create like a shadow, shimmering brown shadow around these details.
really I it's so annoying I know what I'm doing I'm touching the oh the table and then the table is touching the tripod and the tripod is moving so that was it sorry hopefully now it's going to be better not bad at all and the last details here with the crackle again i'm just rubbing that deep 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 in the crackles and then wiping off the excess let's see what i can do here with this brown Ah, I removed too much. There's one spot which is annoying here deep. So I'm taking smaller brush and waxing inside. Wax is going to be permanent in about 10 to 20 minutes depending on the place you are and of course this is a permanent finish water resisting so it's kind of easy to work with you don't have to worry that you're going to um, seal it later it's just going to seal itself anyway grumpy bird gets antiquing treatment as well so it's like antiquing brown with the copper shimmer in it really beautiful color and then of course if you like you can add some details in the corners and so on and so on. I use the baby way because it's convenient, but you can use any um, wipe you like. For the good measure, we put a bit of this wax on this corner as well. would be it I'm really tempted to add some color splatters so I think I'm going to add one or two drops of pink paint this is just watered down liquid acrylic to make it more like watercolor paint now just the bird needs a little bit of the cleaning come on you little one no worries and that would be it i can repeat the same splatters here around the angry bird grumpy bird is always <laughs> and now drying 
I'm not drying the wax, I'm drying the paint. So just to make it clean, clear, sorry. You don't need to dry the wax with the heat gun, it's going to seal itself. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I don't have space to work on the big furniture pieces, but the technique is exactly the same. Let's dry the paint around the angry bird or the grumpy bird. And now basically you just need to let it dry naturally to make sure all of the elements are completely staying in place. And with this, it's going to be, with modeling paste as your glue, it's going to be completely permanent and not possible to break. So this is what we have done. Of course, you can decorate the other sides of the box the same way. It's just, you know, to speed it up, we made the front and the top. So it's a combination of the watercolor an antiquing effect, a little bit edgy and a little bit grungy, but also very, very artistic. And this kind of style um, may be something a little bit different uh, if you're doing furniture, because this um, you, furniture usually gets quite clean or very antique results. You don't have much in between. So that is something that is in between and hopefully you feel inspired <laughs> let me know if you have any questions now i can just repeat what kind of mediums we were using uh, first of all we started with the white gesso on the wooden box two coats of gesso to make sure it's going to be uh, perfectly primed so you know it's going to be sealed that's one thing. Then we were creating the textures. One texture, it was the stencil. I used my Gothic stencil for uh, Prima. I called it uh, just simply Gothic. There's another one called Manuscript, which is going to do very similar job for you, but different kind of font. Then uh, on that side, mostly you can see the results of the white crackle. So I applied that with the palette knife or if you prefer uh, with the silicone brush. So that was Art Extravagant's White Crackle. And through the stencil, we were using Art Basics modeling paste, which is white after drying. Then we were using the same modeling paste and the elements taken from the aviary mold to create composition of the flowers. Here they are. And then I grungy that up by adding modeling uh, sorry mechanica elements coming from my own uh, mold for prima that is uh, aviary with the birds and the apple blossoms this is mechanica then we were painting everything with the gesso to make sure all the elements are going to be completely permanent and white and matte. I was avoiding the crackle not to hide too much the pretty crackles uh, visible. And then when everything was dry, we were playing with two colors of liquid acrylics, carmine, uh, uh, sorry, crimson and carmine. This is crimson, this is carmine with the small brush and water sprayer to create the watercolor effects. And when that was dry, we just added a little bit of the red amber and ticking wax. This wax contains uh, copper uh, mica as well. So it's brown base with the copper uh, mica. So it is anticking really nicely and it is really showing the details of the crackle. So that is an example of uh, using Finover art mediums on the home decor project. All the techniques are easy to transfer to 
larger projects. You can make panels like that. You can decorate your frames, your bigger pieces of furniture. It's going to be completely permanent finish. So if you have any questions, I will be very happy to answer. It's uh, really fun to make, I have to tell you. Whoops. I have to go a little bit further away because my camera is going down. Thank you, thank you so much. Let me show you that in this angle as well. So the box is kind of, I would say, 20 by 25 centimeters and uh, it may be used as a treasure box, but uh, this kind of technique goes on everything, really everything. It can be done on the canvas, on the wooden panel, on the HDF. You can combine these techniques making uh, any kind of uh, furniture decoration as well. And of course, color palettes are optional. I wanted to make it in the warmer color palette with this shiny browns giving you the shadows but absolutely any other color combination would work as well thank you i'm happy you like it i like it as well it's going to be somewhere in my home i will use it for something i'm not sure for what but i will um, put it for, you know there's always need for boxes right boxes are always great for jewelry for letters for postcards for uh, for your uh, extra batteries, for your uh, lost elements as well. So, uh, you know, boxes are always good. And, you know, the style of the decoration is up to you. I had to make it a little bit grungy, but it's grungy and sweet. And you don't really have to go this way. You can go more traditional romantic way with this aviary mold you will get really uh, good uh, combination of the elements to create the um, uh, cool looking, very, very sweet birdie <laughs> design. Yes, for found treasures, for example, for example. Yep. So thank you so much for watching and uh, <laughs> It was uh, my pleasure. I have to now finish the other two sides so they are not feeling so lonely and uh, clean the bottom a little bit because I wasn't careful enough, of course. But I absolutely love the front and I think it is really good result with the color palette I picked. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. And uh, it was my pleasure to have you here in my studio. If you're looking for Finovar products, they are, they are all made by Prima Marketing, just as redesigned with Prima. And you're supposed to uh, see them on the Prima website or I think redesigned with Prima website as well. So uh, I will post the photos of this box tomorrow. Uh, I will take them in the daylight so you can see the details a little bit better. Thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>